This is a video tutorial for river meander migration modeling in the IRIC platform. And this is uh, tutorial number two. It's entitled Calculation Condition, a first project. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to start to use the Calculation Condition drop down tab, <coughs> which you'll see shortly when I open up the program. This is the main control feature for the meander migration model. And because you're going to spend lots and lots of time using this particular feature and this drop down tab and all of the dialog boxes in it, we're going to take it slowly and thoroughly. So I call this a first project because we're going to carry the meander migration model all the way through to a finished product, although it's very much a first draft. First of all, there are a number of dialog boxes when you do the drop-down tab, and I'll show it to you. And I hedge on naming the actual number of dialog boxes because uh, even at the present moment it's changing, but there's around a dozen of them. These boxes uh, are accessed, uh, as you will see, in a tab called Calculation Condition, which is a drop-down box, and then you choose Setting, and in that there are a number of what I call dialog boxes under a, a heading called groups. I'm going to show you how to use three of those dialog boxes. And those three encompass the settings that are necessary in order to test a project to see if it'll actually run. <coughs> and this particular kind of test might very well be the very first thing that you do with any project before you take it any further. So another term for this test might be something like Meander Migration Project First Draft. Okay. Um, I will show you how to open the calculation condition. And for the three dialog boxes that we're going to use, I'll show you what you need to do in order to make your first draft. Then I'm going to show you actually how to run the program to model migration. And then Finally, we're going to take a glance at the output. Uh, the first thing we glance at is the Manning's N, which is calculated and shown in the output, which is a very important reality check on the flow variables. And then secondly, we'll do a quick visualization of the output uh, in a GIS program. Okay, before we begin, you're going to need to know some important things. First of all, I'm going to assume that uh, we have imported a center line that has been georeferenced. These were covered in a previous video. Secondly, you need to have on hand five important variables that relate to the river. <coughs> These are the key inputs to the code. And they are input into a dialog box called flow variables. So although some of these seem like geomorphic variables, we're going to stick with the name, flow variables. Okay, these five important variables are the discharge, the width, the depth, the slope, and the grain size. Well, you might ask, and, and in fact I do hope you do ask, what discharge, what width, what slope? That's a key question. Now I'm just going to state what we're using and we'll have another video tutorial that will deal with how you might get these valuables, uh, <laughs> valuable variables. Uh, the answer is you use the two-year flow values. Um, it's what is, can be called a characteristic discharge. In our case, it's the two-year recurrence interval flow. So you have the two-year recurrence interval discharge, and then you have the associated width, depth, and slope uh, related to the two-year discharge. So we are going to open IRIC. Okay, once we're in IRIC, we'll open this one that says centerline only, and we have it. Now, as I've said, we've already taken the steps of importing the centerline and having it georeferenced and the projection georeferenced. 
So we go to what I keep calling probably the most important tab here. Calculation condition. Right here. And underneath that you choose setting. Okay. Now under this heading groups here, uh, here's what I call dialog boxes. These, uh, these essentially control the running of a meandermation project. Okay? Now, as I indicated, I'm going to skip over most of these things, and I'm just going to focus on the three that are in bold here. Uh, first of all, the one called flow. Second of all, the one called erosion algorithm factors and thirdly the one called output. These are the ones you have to take care of if you're going to get anything to run. Other variables, at least for the meantime, can be run in their default values. Okay, now, now we'll go on to the flow tab. Now we're going to need to enter the key values, as I said before. Um, as I said before, the, an entire tutorial will be devoted to how to developing these values. Um, and another tutorial will discuss, maybe even more importantly, uh, how precise you have to be for each of these variables for the code to run reasonably. Um, and I hope you see how why that's important. Um, model results are sensitive to some of these input variables and not so sensitive to others. For example, particle size is not that critical. If you doubled the particle size, where it says grain size in millimeters, it wouldn't be a big deal. The program wouldn't blow up. You doubled the discharge, the program wouldn't work. So later we'll talk about sensitivity in another, uh, another tutorial. Um, I happen to know the input values for the Sacramento River on the Ord Ferry Reach, and I will put them in right now. The discharge, 2180 cubic meters per second. The width, 277. The depth, 4.91. The slope, 0 0.1230 297 and the grain size finally 18 millimeters. Okay, now you need to disregard all of this. We're going to use a fixed discharge uh, for now. That's what you need to choose. Okay, uh, moving on, we go to the next important dialog box erosion algorithm factors. Okay. For our first draft of the project, we're going to use a fixed erosion field. And that's under erodibility type. You'll see that the default is erodibility grid. But what we want is a fixed FD. Now, we call the erosion potential FD. And the default value for this is 300. We're going to keep that default value now, um, because you know what? That default value was actually put there because it works well for reaches on the Sacramento River. Um, the value 300 may be meaningless, and indeed it should be. It has no real intrinsic value, uh, no intrinsic meaning. And we'll have a tutorial to show you how to choose appropriate values. And unless you happen to be using the Sacramento River or something very similar to it, this might not be the best. Nonetheless, even with a smaller river, if you used it, it would probably give you a reasonable output. Um, let me describe that value in the simplest ways possible. Um, the smaller the number, the greater the erosion. Okay. Uh, FD can be thought of as sort of a roughness size. The bigger it is, the rougher it is. And the rougher a surface is, the slower something moves. Okay? 
There are different ways to assign the erodibility, as you see up here. There are currently four different ways to do it. We're picking the fixed FD for this first cut project. Now uh, we'll move on to the output box. So this is a very important feature. First of all, the program's not going to run at all unless you put something in here. Luckily there is an error message that tells you that in case you forget. And maybe more importantly, if you're running a real project, this is where you store the results, and they're stored automatically for you. But you have to set the path. So we need to go in here and set a path. And I like to have a separate folder just for IRIC output so that I know that it's there. And I'll make a new folder here. And I'll call it our test. Okay, out test. That's good enough. I could rename it so all of this works. Our test. And I think I'll get rid of the space. Okay. We've set the path, and then the spatial projection has already been set and was dealt with earlier. Uh, before we do that and leave the calculation condition, I want to show you the defaults in the computational dialog box. Okay. Uh, the default time setting here is 50 years and it's currently set to run from 2016 to 2066. Your center line might not be 2016. These are just names right now. It's not a big deal. Uh, they will show up in the output. You could change these if you wanted to, but I suggest just leaving them. It means it's going to do a 50-year run starting from the center line that you put in. Okay, now we save and close. And finally, we're ready to do a run. This is the Run button. We simply press the Run button. And I am not going to save the project. We see it running. We see the output. We say OK. Now, first of all, going to look at the output here. You come to the top and it says Manning's in. The calculated Manning's in is point zero three one. It's one of the first things we see. Um, this is the first way you can check to see if your flow values make sense. This Manning's end value is calculated from the input flow variables. And point zero three one is reasonable. It's good as a rough first check that things are working okay. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is just uh, take a look-see at the output and um, open up your GIS program. And in my case, I'm using QGIS here. And I'm going to first of all set the projection. Enable on-the-fly projecting. ETM zone 10. Okay. And then I'm going to add vector layers, browse, IREC test cases. Uh, let's see here. Output, our test. I'm going to pick them all up and open them. And there they are, projected. Uh, we'll have a look-see, close up, see what they look like. There's migration every year for 50 years. One of the things that I like to do here is to put a Google Map in the background. And it comes in on top, so I'll put it underneath all of these.
this is a started with a 1976 center line so I wouldn't expect it to uh, fall right on top of the Google Earth image but it's a good way to visualize and it lets us know the important thing it lets us know our program is working Okay, uh, this then uh, ends our, our tutorial. Um, in summary, I'll put the summary on here. We started with a georeference beginning center line, and then we used three out of the many dialog boxes to set up a first draft meander migration model uh, that moved the model 50 years, moved the channel 50 years into the future. Uh, third, we ran the model in IRIC. Uh, fourth, we checked the Manning's end to see if it was reasonable. And um, fifth, we checked the visualization of the output. Uh, you'll probably end up using a GIS program uh, for visualizing your results. So this is the first step in that. If you have any questions, uh, please contact me. Thank you.